I can't believe how quick I was able to put this particular dress together. All I did was just follow the same step I followed in drafting out my one shoulder. I followed that step, did few adjustments to the pattern to be able to get a flay short dress for myself. And please, let's not even talk about the sleeves. Anyways, today's video, we're going to continue the last pattern we uploaded, which is the one shoulder pattern. On today's video, I'm going to be sewing it together, the pattern. I'll be sewing it on my fabric and also creating a sleeves for it, a long sleeve. So if this look is something that you are interested in, I would advise you to go watch the pattern drafting and just make your pattern available. Grab your fabric and let's cut this, sew this and create the sleeves together. On this video, we are going to place our pattern on a fabric, transfer the dart and then cut. So I use crepe for this particular project and I use two yards of crepe. So I have my pattern on my fabric and I went ahead to cut this because this could not fit the table and I had to do this on the floor so I couldn't film while I was cutting but all I did was place my pattern on a fabric, cut this out and I transferred the dart, okay? So while cutting, I left like 0.5 inch on all spaces. You know, we already left sewing allowance, but I still left like 0.5 inches on all spaces. So this is the front and I have the back here too. Now let me show you what it looks like with the dart transferred to the fabric. So this is what it looks like. I didn't show you when I was transferring my dart because like I said, it couldn't fit my table. But I have a video that shows you how to transfer your dart from your pattern to your fabric in the description box i'll link a video that can help you transfer your dart from your pattern to your fabric so i'll start by sewing the dart on my back piece so this is the dart on one side of my back piece remember your back piece has to be two piece while your front is just one so i'll start by following the lines that i indicated on the dart folding them into two equal parts and sewing And this is what it looks like on the right side of my fabric. And then also on the other side of my back piece. Remember, I have two pieces for my back. And this particular side is the side that has the armhole and shoulder. While the other side is the off shoulder. So once you have your dart sewn, please go ahead and iron this. Very important. Let's go iron. Okay, I always like to tell people to iron while they sew because this helps your work comes out really clean. So ironing while you sew is important, okay? Especially if you're a beginner. Beginners, always make sure you iron while you sew, okay? So that you can be able to see what you're doing and be able to correct any mistake. Now, I am marking one inch out for the zip. We have to sew in the zip so that we can continue into the next step. Marking out the one inch for the zip from the shoulder down to the length. So I'll place the two back pieces together so that I can go sew in the one inch. Now see how I am taking my time to show you what I do because I am always um, putting in consideration the beginners. So if you're a beginner, you see what I'm doing here, please make sure you do this particular part. Mark out your one inch for your zip at the back and sew it, okay? Follow the lines. In case you don't know what one inch looks like, 
just mark one inch with your tape on the fabric okay and you'll see what it looks like i went ahead to adjust my back because i wanted it to be deeper than what i created and that's just what i'm doing here i am just adjusting it making it a little bit deeper this is not necessary this is optional now we're going to go ahead and hem the neckline that's the next step and for me i used my bias to hem the neckline now there are videos that i have available or there are videos on youtube that teach you how to finish your neckline in different ways you can use facing you can use bias you can use piping like there are so many ways you can finish you can even use lining you can decide to line the full dress or just make a short lining for your dress all these ways are process or steps that you can use in finishing your neckline for me i am using a bias method and this is how i fix my bias every time i sew on the right side and then fold this into the wrong side and top stitch and this is how i finish my neckline not every time though sometimes i like to use facing sometimes i line i know i've made dress on here that i use lining and i use lining for the whole thing so yeah this is what it looks like after using my bias this is something i wanted and i am satisfied with the results so this is what you should have if you use your bias and this here is the front piece okay so i'll place the front piece and the back piece together this is the back piece. this is how the back piece looks so for the back piece i did the bias piping on the different side i didn't sew them at the same time because we need that opening at the center back for the zip okay so you pipe the neckline before sewing the zip side so now i'm placing the front piece and the back piece together and i was so by the allowance i left as my sewing allowance so i'm going to be sewing by one inch that was the allowance i left on my pattern one inch and then on the shoulder while cutting i left half inch i'm going to sew half inch now it is very important as a beginner to always remember what you used as your allowance for sewing and in case you don't remember you can go ahead and start measuring every point on your body so you can measure your hip whatever you have there you divide it equally on each side right side and your left side do the same thing on the length do the same thing on the waist and that will help you get your fit in okay that's if you don't remember your sewing allowance but if you do remember just go ahead and sew that in now the next step is for us to attach the zip and i will show you how i am attaching my zip so this is the back side of my dress and first of all i will take off the pins and then i'm going to measure where my zip is going to stop i'm going to indicate where my zip is going to stop And that is 15 inches down from the back okay 15. now from that down side of the zip the stop point i'll mark one inch down one inch i'm marking one inch down i'll bring in my zip i'll mark one inch on my zip upright from the down side of the zip i'll mark one inch upwards and then i'll place this one inch on the zip on the one inch down from the stop point on the fabric or on my dress so the two one inch sitting together i'll start sewing my zip from one side then i'll move to the next side okay this is how i always sew my zip following the line that the ironing that's why i say iron when you iron you get this line from your zip so when i say iron iron this is one of the reasons so i'm going to follow the line to sew in my zip on each side okay so i'll start by sewing from either the right side and then i'll go to the left side but this is how i always sew in my zip okay that's why i always say iron because for me ironing helped me know where to sew my zip on so you see i always check place the teeth of the zip on the line and then i sew did you hear that i place the teeth of the zip on that line and then i sew Oh, 
I'll move to the other side. See this side is done. Now move to the other side. I'll flip it. Move to the other side and also follow the line created from ironing. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now go ahead and cut out the excess of the zip. Okay, or zip this down first. Very necessary, please zip it down first before you cut. And then I'll tuck this extra that I have here, just one inch extra. I'll tuck it into the fabric and then I'll just top stitch on it. So this is what I always do for either my skirt or my dress. Now let's create the sleeves, okay? So to create my sleeve, the first thing I always do is measure the armhole, okay? Because that is the measurement I will use in drafting out the pattern for the sleeve. So measure what I have on the armhole. Now, most people would like to go through the armhole round, starting from the back to the front, just following the roundness or the curve. But because of, I don't think you guys will see that this is black. I'm going to close my, like, place the two together equally. And then I'll just calculate what I have from one end to the other end. So whatever I have here, I'm just going to assume that the same I have for the back. So I got 8 inches. So it means I have 8 in front, 8 in back, which is 16 inches. And that is my round armhole. My round armhole on my body is 16. And I have 16 here. So this is perfect. So please grab your pattern paper because we are going to be drafting this on a pattern paper. I'll mark down one inch for my starting point on the pattern paper. Please ignore the wetness. This wetness happened from the fabric. Okay, the fabric that I just removed, it was placed on my pattern and it got it wet. Okay, so I have a wet pattern here. So from the start line, I'll mark that eight inches I got on my armhole. Okay, remember the eight inches I got? I'm marking the eight inches. Now from the 8 inches, I'll come down by 4.5. I'll just come down by 4.5 on my pattern from the start point, which is from the 8 inches. And on here, I'll go in by 3 inches. And this is just going to help me create a slight, will I say S or curve? I don't know, but just see what I'm doing. I'm going to use dotted lines first, dash lines, and once I'm okay, I'll go ahead and trace it out. So this is a very quick way to create a sleeve. But if you don't want to follow this way, I have a step-by-step -step process of creating a sleeve pattern, and that is on my channel. Okay, just go check my channel page. You see a lot of video on sleeve patterns. Now I'm marking the length of my sleeves, and for the pattern I use 25 which I adjusted when I was cutting the fabric. I made, I made it longer. So I will say total was like 27. So yeah, this is the length of my sleeves. I also mark my elbow point because this is a fitted sleeve somehow, somehow on the elbow point. So I'll mark my elbow point down from the start line and that's 12 inches. So you should know what able point means. That's the point where your able sits. Okay, take that point from your shoulder. So this is my able point. Now I'm going to move back to my curve line where I have my curve for the armhole. I'm going to measure that eight inches that I have on the fabric plus half inch for sewing allowance okay so i'm just going to measure eight inches plus half which is 8.5 so if you want to use one inch for your sewing allowance make sure you add the one inch to what you're measuring here on your curve line i'll move down to my elbow point i'll mark my round elbow divided by two and you know why we're dividing by two because our fabric is going to be put into two so that's why. So I divided my round elbow by 2 plus sewing allowance. And now I'll connect this to my armhole. You don't need a curve ruler for this, okay? You can use your straight ruler, it doesn't matter. 
I'll move to my wrist. I'll mark my round wrist divided by 2 plus sewing allowance. I'll connect. Now, I'm going to be creating the flay on the wrist, okay? I'll create the flay on the wrist because remember that my sleeve has flay on the wrist instead of fitted it's flay so for that i'm going to be marking extra four inches to that and i'm just going to find a way to connect from below the elbow to that point okay to that four inches now at this point it is up to you to be creative to be um artistic to be whatever it is that you want to be to get what you want okay you don't even have to make the particular sleeve that i make you can use different sleeves for your dress but if you want a flay you can this is how i created my flay so you can actually follow this process and create your own different kind of flay okay but this is what i did and now i'll go ahead and cut this out this is my sleeves how many inches did I go down from the elbow point before I start creating the flay? Before I started connecting to the flay? I think 4 inches. I'm going to show you. I think 4 inches. So 4 inches was the break point where I started connecting to the flay. Remember I had to do like dash line for us before I got this. So let me show you the what's the break point for my elbow. So 4 inches was the break point. So that's the break point where the flay started from. So yeah, follow this process and be creative, my love. Be you. <laughs> now we're going to place the pattern on a folded fabric, okay? That's folding it into two. And I folded my fabric into an A shape. Not straight. A shape. Because of the flay at the wrist, I wanted to have like this flayish effect on the wrist. So I folded my fabric into an A shape and then I placed it to confirm if it was going to be enough before I started ironing to cut. And I'll flip this now to the good side, go iron and come attach it. Okay, so I'll just go iron. Like I said, ironing is important. So yeah. So this is done. See how clean it looks? Because I have ironed it. Now I'll go ahead and attach it to the dress by placing the seams allowance or the seam where the seam line is by placing the two seam line together matching it making sure that the two sit equally at the same point then i start sewing around my armhole sewing by the allowance i left so i left half an inch for joining my armhole to my sleeves and i'm just going to sew by half an inch so this is like last no this is second to the last step all we have to do now is go hem all round of the dress the edges that is out we we'll go hem and that's it okay so we're going to weave the edges and hem the edges i did this i took this to the closest um weaving store and i got this weaved and now i'm going to hem using my hemming guam so i'm going to hem this on the length of my dress i used one inch to hem the dress so this is the hemming gum i'll place it in between fabric fold it and then i'll iron this down 
So what I am doing here is the same thing I did on the sleeves. I went ahead to weave and also hem this with my hemming gum. And that is how I was able to make my one shoulder dress. Let me know in the comment section if this video is interesting. If you love this kind of dress. And you guys, you'll be seeing me on the next video. I don't know what my next video is going to be. But I know it's going to be interesting. Of course. It's going to be very interesting. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like. Share subscribe comment with your questions your appreciations your whatever just say that on the comment section and thank you for engaging see you on my next video bye